On today's show, a Porsche Taycan goes a really long way in 24 hours. The Opel e Corsa signs up to go on rally courses. And we tell you about an electrifying conversation that you won't want to miss. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co? NZ. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup from the world of clean cars and energy. It's great to be back. I've got some great news about a new Kiwi event that you're going to want to attend a little later in the show. But first, let's get on with all those news headlines. Tesla has officially pushed new software updates to its so-called Raven generation of Model S and Model X cars, improving their new adaptive suspension systems. Raven generation Model S and Model X cars have only been production for the last few months or so, so the update will only work on brand new cars. Tesla says the update will improve ride and handling, especially at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour, which you should of course only be doing on a racetrack or the autobahn. Ahead of its official Frankfurt Motor Show debut, Mercedes-Benz has revealed the production version of the EQV electric MPV. Offering a predicted range of 405 kilometers, the EQV features a 150 kilowatt electric motor, onboard AC charging of up to 11 kilowatts, 110 kilowatt CCS quick charging capabilities, and 90 kilowatt hour battery pack. It will be capable of seating between six and eight people, depending on configuration. BMW has been teasing more pre-launch videos of its iNext electric SUV, showcasing some of the testing procedures that the iNext is currently undergoing. BMW is keen to keep the hype up, but this video doesn't really tell us a huge amount of new detail about the car itself. BMW, in its usually verbose press release manner, details the new production process for the iNext, which includes augmented reality testing and X-ray scanning. But it doesn't change the fact that the car won't enter production until 2021. The three-wheeled motorcycle car that was the Carver 1, a high-powered, adrenaline-filled, tilting pocket rocket, has completed its official transition to electric power, and it's now offering test drives ahead of an autumn production launch. Gone is the throaty engine, and in its place is an electric drivetrain offering 100 kilometers of range, 40 degrees of tilt, and a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour. No, it's no race car, but it could be a fun, cheap runabout with a sub 8,000 euro price tag. Porsche continued its ramp up to the launch of the production Taycan this week by teasing shots of the car's interior and announcing an in-dash Apple Music streaming service without needing to use CarPlay. In addition, Porsche shared a video of a pre-production Taycan high-speed endurance drive in which the vehicle covered 3,425 kilometers in a single day, charging using a 350 kilowatt quick charging station. This continues Porsche's desire to highlight that the Taycan won't overheat when being driven or charged hard. Draco, the latest all-electric California automotive startup, has officially revealed its Draco GTE. With a design that reminds me a little of the Mazda RX-8, the Draco GTE packs a quad motor design, putting out 1,200 horsepower, has a top speed of 206 miles per hour, and it has seating for four. There's a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, 15 kilowatt AC onboard charger, and DC quick charging support for both CCS and Chadamo. Only 25 will be made at an eye-watering $1.25 million. As someone who grew up watching rally cars, I've remained a fan of the sport, but in recent years, I've got to be honest, I've struggled to engage in it because of the high emissions of motorsports in general. But this week I got some good news from Opel, namely that it's going to be debuting a purpose-built rally spec e Corsa at the Frankfurt Motor Show next month that's going to form the basis of the ADAC Opel e Rally Cup. It's great to see this electric hot hatch pick up the rally torch and we'll see the race series get underway next year. 
And finally, as part of its remit to establish a charging network for electric cars in the US and to encourage more people to dump the pump, Electrify America has launched a new ad campaign this week telling people, well, I'm not really sure what it's telling people. You see, it tries to align electric car adoption with computer adoption and plays on the idea that computers, which are now common, were once a bit weird too. But honestly, the result, while a little funny, is way off piste. And while I'm at it, if you'd like to see some more EV ads, don't forget to check out our EV ad special from earlier this week with Matt Teske. I'll link to it below. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, please do send it our way. We love hearing from you. Make sure that you also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the change. And if you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand towards a 100% zero emission future. Before I go, I just want to tell you about Electrifying Conversations, a fantastic one-day industry event that's going to be held in New Zealand on my birthday. That's November 1st at the ASB Showgrounds in Auckland. There will be a whole host of speakers there covering the whole gamut of electric motorsport, charging infrastructure and vehicle manufacturing, as well as plenty of other areas. And you'll get a chance to talk to many other like minded individuals in the EV world. If you go, I'll put a link in the show notes so you can buy your own tickets. I'll be back soon with a new episode. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite. <laughs> See you next time.